Hey y'all, it's Jordan here. So, I actually just finished a video explaining uh, great versions of Trap and really horrible examples of Trap. Um, but I'm sure you can go out and find out about certain things. Um, what I'm doing is I'm researching and researching and researching um, Trap and the origins and things of that. But one of the things that caught my attention before I uploaded the last video, well, I can't, I can't upload the video that I saved because I just deleted everything. But I realized the CAS bill was passed, so I can't show you any examples of trap because the copyright claim uh, takes over responsibility for those songs so anything people say or do is now in effect you are liable for your words and everything so meaning that if uh if a troll says you're fake and gay you can take his ass to court and sue the shit out of him if you want because he's offensive um but yeah there's he's liable for his words Meaning that if he says, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to do that. Well, that's too fucking bad because that's his opinion. And you have the law under your belt so you can take his ass to court. Anyways, that's a little bit of rant. Um, I will show you what I'm doing. I'm actually remodeling this Sandra Silva, uh, Quintino, Epic, Carnage, and Luminox Festival Trap Refix. The problem with this Trap Remix... The drop is so shitty. I'm going to do something better with that drop. And that's why I'm remixing it. But what I actually want to show you guys are a few tips and tricks that I, uh, I found. So let me change out my master. And I'll show you one of the interesting tricks. One of them, and I'll get started right here, is called body. The reason why I named this chorus preset called body is because it adds a lot of low end to track. So I'll grab, oh, I don't know, a bass. So I'll grab this bass and I'll, that's on a mini effect. I don't want that. So let me undo that and drag over the chorus to an audio track and then drag it from here. So now, I'm going to turn the chorus off and on so you can f have a difference between the two. It would be better if I looped a section over and over again so you can hear the differences. Because a lot of examples I find on the internet, they just have a sound um, with the dry wet off and then the dry wet on. But I, d I don't hear the difference between the two. So I'm actually going to loop this segment for... It's going to go really, really fast. And then I'm going to turn it on and off as fast as I can. So what this preset does is it adds a little bit more characteristic um, in terms of signal processing. It doesn't distort anything. It doesn't boost any of the low end. What it does, it actually brings out some more dynamics with your audio or MIDI data. So that's actually a really cool trick. If you need me to upload a pack of presets that are vastly unique for your for your tracks and everything, um, I will do that. So let's go on to uh, tip and trick number two. So for tip number two, I thought I would go over how to um, create 
a mechanical device with arpeggiators. Now, with this, with this tool, um, I can actually create one in front of you guys so that way you can build it yourself. It's basically a MIDI effect rack. Drag over three arpeggiator. And to do this, I'm just going to hold down Alt and click and drag to create three. Now, to create a mechanical device, they usually operate at very high frequencies. So I'm actually going to take the rate down to about 64, turn the gate to about 100, steps make it to about 8. For the second arp arpeggiator, take it to about 64, take the gate to 110, and steps all the way to 8. Now, for our final arpeggiator, this is what actually controls the uh, the the timing of the mechanics. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to one fourth, and play you through the gated effect of a hundred percent. It's jumping really, really, really high, because the mechanical effect that creates with the arpeggiator is going so slow it's just going on and off with the other timed effects. So I'm actually going to change this to 1 16th and then have a listen. Now in order to get more of a rhythmical pattern we're actually going to change the first arpeggiator to 128 and the second arpeggiator to 196. I want to change the rate to about 132. And the gate. And the steps. Now, as you can hear, it's starting to go much faster and much faster and much faster. And you can actually add another arpeggiator to get even crazier effects and more of a of a uh, bit crushing effect um, depending on what synth you use. This is actually just a basic piano that comes with Mac. So my version of the mechanical toy is um, a little bit different but it still holds some of the same concepts. It sounds like a wind-up toy. So I'm going to show you for tip number three is just um, how to create a wobble bass, an operator, without using the filter. So on to tip three. Okay. So for tip number three, I basically just changed the algorithm for, uh, formula to number four. And I have two fixed envelopes that just have sine waves. And what happens is, uh, let me see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, with this algorithm, it's basically looping into oscillator, uh, let's see, oscillator 2, so A, B. So the green is 2, and it loops back in. It goes into conjunction with 3, so it's sending the signal from D to B, then to A, or D, then to B, then to C, then back to D again. So this formula actually combines what is recycled material throughout all of the three oscillators in order to combine with the, the last oscillator. So if you have a listen, We've created a semi sub bass with just two oscillators um, reflecting each other. So that's it for tip three. Um, actually, I can show you how I did this. So I'm just going to load in a blank operator, change the first one to fix, and change it to point 0.1, then boost it to a frequency to where I can hear it. 
334. Turn on the second one. Turn the level to maybe about negative 13. Make sure it's fixed. Fixed. And uh, change it to 0 0.01. And then just leave it like it is, and you have yourself a wobble bass. You can even change the lower frequency to see how it syncs up. But I'll show you this with an uh, example of what's going on. So take this auto pan for example. The, there's, a, there's a sine wave right here, and it's just going up and down, up and down, up and down. So you can hear that or you can see it right there. And it's going up and down, up and down, up and down. So what happens when you have a second oscillator is if you set it at different settings, what's going to happen is the phase in between will create a wobble. So when it's going down, you're hearing the second one rise up. And as the first one goes down... The second one is at the top, and you can see it right here. So that that this is actually what's going on inside this synthesizer. So for tip number four, I'm going to show you um, some unique tricks and reason, and then that'll do it for Friday, unless you guys want me to make a synth. So I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, so for tip number four, what I want to show you is I've loaded up one of my monster patches. And in this, I've done a little bit different processing. I have a equalizer to only dive in with the snares because it has a lot of low end that will come with the drums. So it's, it's a little bit different patch. So what goes on? is it goes through the equalizer, then it goes through a maximizer, and then a compressor, and then another maximizer. What I'm doing with the maximizer is I'm squashing the signal down, and then, no, I'm having the signal come out at like full volume, and the compressor squashes the volume, or the signal that's passing through here, uh, to a reasonable amount, and then you can adjust how much you want to come out with the second uh, maximizer so like let's say this is a little bit too loud so I'm actually gonna turn it down a bit but it's taking this um, signal that's passed through the compressed signal and it's coming out the uh, other uh, it's coming out through the maximizer and what you can do with the second maximizer is you can trim your signal so that way it goes through the other, it, it comes out a little bit softer instead of going up here and mess, messing around with the mixer. There's a whole bunch of different ways to mess around with this mixer in order to get the right mix you want. But I come from not mixing with a mixer. I come from uh, messing around on a keyboard for millions of years. Then when I went to audio engineering, that's when we discussed the the mixer and how to repair guitars and compressors and things of that sort. So that's tip number four. For tip number five, I think I'll just make a synth for you guys. So I don't have any more tips. That's that's it. I've given you all my trade. So for tip number five, we're actually not going to cut to a screen or anything. Let me delete this. We're actually going to make a synth right here and right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a Maelstrom and I'm going to set the first oscillator to maybe a sweeping saw. Turn off the motion, take it down an octave. Take it to about the mil middle. Add a little bit of shift to it. Uh, turn on sync. Make the sync to one fourth and have it this is a sweeping saw, right? So it's gonna go through all the different curves. I'm gonna have a rising down synth, a rising down modulation. And let's set that to one eighth, actually. 
Turn up the index. Take down the shift. That sounds a little mucky. Let's use it. So I'm going to turn it to the shaper. For the second oscillator, let's make it something gritty, so like a PMW. Set it to about 59, so it's in sync with the other one. Turn up the shift. I'm actually just going to copy all these parameters. So now we have a little bit more grittiness. And I actually want this signal to ring out a little bit more, so I'm going to turn up the release to about 26 for both of them. And for the attack, maybe 32. I'm gonna turn off this filter, turn on shaper. Turn on, see, even when the filter is not on, the signal is still passing through here, so I'm gonna send it to the shaper. Turn on sign, make it about 70. Take it off for filter, turn the amount for the filter envelope all the way up. I'm gonna take the K and sustain all the way, uh, the release to 26, and the attack to 32. Turn on the spread to about 8. Then after this, I want to create an RV7000. Take each one to a quarter. And then after this, I'm going to create a Line 6 base amp. Turn on the compressor. After this, I'm going to create a Screen 4 distortion unit. And even after this, because I'm not completely done, I'm going to create an MC class equalizer, then a compressor, then a maximizer, and then another line 6B compressor. Make everything a little bit sweeter. So I'm actually going to go through all these different filters and find which one that works. <laughs> Let me do something else in this synth. So I'm actually going to leave the octaves where they are, which is at number 5, I think? 4. Oh, I forgot to do stuff for the mod wheel. I'm just going to turn everything up. The mod wheel. <laughs> Oh, cool. So we've actually created something new. Um, what I'm doing is I'm taking the damage to 42, taking it to scream, turn P1 all the way in the P2 to a quarter. Uh, for the maximizer, I'm sorry, for the equalizer, I'm going to turn parameter 1, take it do down to 154, gain down, Q all the way up. Parameter 2, take it about 3.4, gain down, Q all the way up. High shelf, 3 kilohertz, gain, gain up a little bit, and Q all the way off. Compressor, I'm actually going to take this about 24.7 to about 16 to 1, or 19.2. Uh, take the uh, attack all the way down, maybe a little bit more, so about 15, and then the release to 223 milliseconds. Take off the limiter for the maximizer, uh, soft clip 127, the release to auto, and turn on the compressor. <laughs> Oh, 
Ah, I messed that up. So this is actually a very powerful synth and I might actually save it in my monster patches because I fucking love the shit out of it. I want to call it uh, Zella Master or Zella Lemon. I love this grittiness. I fucking love it. I'm seeing how low and how high it can go. So that's, we actually created this patch together, so I fucking love this Zella Lemon. So if you uh, want me to create more patches like this, um, let me know. If you want me to do more tips and tricks, please let me know. I'm going to be working here in a minute for my grandparents, so if you're going to send me a message to upload uh, more shit, please let me know ASAP. And have a wonderful day. Uh, it's very rainy here. And so, uh, well, never mind. Just have a great day.